Okay, everyone, welcome to the latest episode of All Too Real 2 podcast uh, with uh, your host, that is me, Michael E. Cullen II, and my co-host, as always, is Matthew Haas. Hello. That was very assertive. Good to be here. I'm glad you're here, too. Hello, audience. They, I think they heard you the first Glad time. you're here. They, yeah. Sorry, I'm getting used to this. Okay, Matt. We're good. Okay, anyways, <laughs> today on the show, we're going to continue our little delve into uh, direct-to-video sequels to uh, more popular films. Um, this time, we're talking about the third movie in a series, in a trilogy of movies in the Honey brand. No, I'm not talking about the Honey, like the movie with dancing and Jessica Alba and whatnot. I'm talking about Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Okay, so that's the series we're talking talking about. Uh, it was followed theatrically by the movie Honey, I Blew Up the Kid. And then Disney decided, hey, Honey, I Blew Up the Kid didn't do as good in the theaters as we hoped it would. So we're going to uh, take a little break. And then a few years later, they decided to release direct to DVD or VHS at the time in 1997. Honey, we shrunk ourselves because why not? Wayne Zielinski, played by Rick Moranis, is such a brilliant, brilliant scientist that not only did he shrink his kids once. He then went on to blow up his other kid. Not explosive. No, 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 but make made him big. Yeah. And then after that, was so smart that he shrunk himself, his brother, his wife, and his sister in law. Very smart, right, Matt? Yeah, all 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 of this, mind you, because he was trying to shrink a tiki man statue that was Yes, in this one, house. yes. And and then he accidentally um, shrunk his brother and him. And it's funny because his brother literally even says, I think the thing's powering up again. He goes, oh, no, it's not happening. So yeah, it's like he's, he's very smart. Very smart. I actually would um, add a subtitle to this movie, Cut Honey, We Shrunk Our Paychecks. Um, but, yeah, you know. Yeah, we, we shrunk the paycheck for the whole movie. Yeah. Yeah, for everyone involved. Um, okay, so... Let's let's get into the brass tacks here for this, All okay? Right. All right. So, like I said, it was a 1997 direct-to-video sequel to Honey, I Shrunk the Kids and Honey, I Blew Up the Kid. It is the third and final installment in the Honey, I Shrunk the Kids trilogy. Um, it's also the date, the directorial debut of cinematographer Dean Kundi, or Kundi. I don't know how you say his last name, but it's C-U-N-D-E-Y. Mm-hmm. I've heard it pronounced both ways. Anyways, he is known as the cinematographer for films like Halloween and other uh, John Carpenter films and um, a lot of really good cinematography in films. I can't remember off the top of my head a lot of them. Let me let me see if we can find here really quick what else he's done. He's uh, yeah, he's done a lot of collaborations with uh, John Carpenter, Steven Spielberg, Robert Zemeckis. He was the he, he won an Academy Award for Best Cinematographer. Cinematography for his work on Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Rad, Roger Rabbit. Hmm. I can't talk. <laughs> um, Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Um, and he's been nominated like various times. He's now 72 years old. Um, I don't know. So that would have made him in his 50s back then when, we, when he did this film. He's, you know, 
really good cinematographer. But uh, Ray Stella, the cinematographer of this film, not quite sure if he's as good as Dean Kundi, but, you know, he might be okay now, but this is the only thing I can find that he did. Hmm. So um, it was obviously shot. It was shot direct for direct to, uh, direct to video, so it was shot in uh, the old school. Okay, here, here you go, kids. If you didn't know this, back in the day, televisions were square and not rectangle. Right. So if you didn't know that, the, the aspect ratio of a screen would be more square at a four a four by three as opposed to the, you know, ten eighty P and the seven twenty P and all that stuff that we're used to nowadays. <clears throat> and the, you know, one by one and all that uh, different things. You know, there there was different um different aspect ratio back then that would fit your television. So this as this was made basically directly for VHS at the time, because not a lot of people had DVDs even in nineteen ninety seven. Right. Um it was made in a TV format, as opposed to the other two films, which are in you know a cinema format, which is more rectangular. So if you do end up watching this, which I recommend you do before you listen to this, so if you haven't watched it yet, stop the podcast right now, and we can wait for them, right, Matt? For the whole movie? Yeah, we're just going to wait here for like a couple hours. Uh the movie's actually quite short. It's, it's only, actually it's like 75 like a, minutes. It's, yeah, it's, so, it's so it's really fast. Short so, for a movie. So um, I tell you what, folks. We're not actually going to wait for you. We're just going to you know, let you pause this. Yeah. You can come back to us. Yeah. We'll, we'll still be here. I mean, yeah. I mean, you, know, I, I, you really should not listen to our podcast first. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for, it, for honey, uh, we unless, unless you never plan to watch this I mean, yeah, movie. I guess you can listen to us rant about it. I mean, it's yeah. not that great of a movie, in my opinion. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's, your, your, your life is not going to be greatly enhanced no. by watching this. In either anyway, way, <laughs> whatsoever. It's, you're going to be ambivalent at best. Yeah, I mean, it's, ki- it's kind of like, you know, you know how they always say, like, if you have Chinese food and then, like, an hour later you're hungry? Mm-hmm. That's kind of how it felt after watching this movie. Yeah, me too. I wasn't that much, like, culturally fulfilled. I was like, yeah, eh, like, well, like, you know, know. I almost wanted to go back and watch the original. Yeah. Um, <laughs> just to feel a little bit better. But I didn't. Anyways. <laughs> okay, I digress. That's a, a good, lot. That, well, that's a good uh, that's, that's a good explanation for the, yeah. for the younger listeners because they might not know, like, like for example, that's why if you're wa- if you watch like old TV shows like on Netflix, and yeah. it's all like a square. That's the reason you get why the black bars on the side of it. That's the reason yeah. why is because if you notice too, you might watch a show that started off like that, like Scrubs for example, and then you moved, notice in, for the moved first into season, a wider screen. Format. Yeah, in the first season it's square, and I think by the third season everything is is um, full. Like it, yeah, and I'm pretty sure that Scrubs was actually one of the first shows to ever shoot in HD. Oh really? Yeah. Oh wow. A little. Randomness. That's cool. So yeah, Anyways, that's a yeah. good explanation so, yeah. though, for about about that. Um, so uh, okay, so let's get to the get to the plot here. Um, first off, um, maybe maybe we should talk about who stars in this movie first. Okay, the only returning actor from any of the previous films is Rick Moranis as Wayne Zelinsky, a scientist at Zelinsky Labs, which he now owns um before he was like uh worked for somebody in the other films i don't know it's been a while since i've seen the other two honestly so and i honestly don't really care for the second one at all yeah so um i actually like this one better than the second one which is weird maybe i just like it when you shrink things i don't really like it when you make things big yeah um but uh okay rick moranis was there um you also have uh, his his wife is returning, but she looks different. <laughs> in the uh, in the first uh, first movie, um, she was played by uh, Mar- Marcia Strassman, and in the second movie as well. And now she's played by Eve Gordon. I'm not sure. Maybe part of that shrinking paycheck thing, they couldn't afford Marcia Strassman anymore. It's I don't know. Eve Gordon's done a lot of stuff too, but prior to this, she really hadn't done much. <coughs> But uh, I mean, it's not that big of a deal. I mean, I sadly, this was when we're at a time where the uh, what they call the Brechtel test, which you would put onto a film to register how great the uh, female characters in uh, 
in a story are. You know, you can put that on a film or a book or anything like that. Basically, how strong they are and stuff like that. Back then, pretty much women were regulated to wives and girlfriends. Oh, okay. Sadly, so unfortunately, the character of Diane is pretty just interchangeable. You could make, you could put any actress in that role, and it really wouldn't matter. She's a little stronger in this movie, I think, than the other ones. I mean, she was always kind of a strong character, but mm-hmm. it's just, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just saying that it kind of sucks that they recast her because I, I like continuity. But <laughs> what do you got to do? It's direct yeah. the video. You could say, though, that this movie about being shrunk blew up her career because he said she didn't do much before this movie. So, And then later on, she did a bunch of stuff. I was trying to do it. All right, we're done, folks. No, I'm joking. No, no. <laughs> I'm no longer doing podcasts. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Anyways, <laughs> that was good. That was good. Um, that that you know, I I I I think your uh, your your sense of humor is growing. Ooh. That was bad. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> um. Okay, so so then we also have the character of Adam returning, who is the son that they blew up in the second movie. You know, made big, not okay, blew up. Right. Um, <laughs> I hated that title. It's a weird yeah. title, yeah. Um, but I guess it is kind of like blowing up, like when you blow up a balloon, right. more, more than when you like blow up a building. Um, the uh, th- this time he is he's now played as a preteen by Bug Hall, who uh, kids and adults alike might know from the uh, Little Rascals movie that they made in the 90s. He played uh, he played uh, Alfalfa. Obviously, he's not the original Alfalfa, but um, cause he died a long time ago <laughs> under mysterious circumstances. Anyways, um, <laughs> we'll get into that some other time. <laughs> the... Uh, so so basically, let's get to the plot here, Matt. Do you know? Do you do you remember much of the plot? Like, I'll have you try to explain this uh, to us. Basically, I think it was like he's um yeah he's got his own lab now, and he's was um supposed to be doing this conference or doing this big presentation, and didn't didn't really go so well. And then his his wife was had a like a vacation scheduled, and she was going to go with um. With her uh, sister-in-law. With her sister-in-law, and he was basically going to watch hmm. the kids. That was the plan, at least. And then uh, she demanded that he get rid of his Tiki Man statue because it was such an eyesore while she was gone. So then he got the idea to shrink it so that he could have it because he believed it was a like, good luck charm to him, and he wanted to respect the religious nature of it, so he d- didn't want to just get rid of it. So he shrunk it, and that worked, but then his brother was there, too, or something. and His brother works at the company. Yeah, his brother so, yeah. works. Yeah, and then his brother was there, told him not to do it because they were actually he was actually forbidden to use that machine yeah. again by, like, the FDA. Which but th- there, there, was a, there was a committee that involved the FDA and his wife. Which I'm not sure what the Food and Drug Administration has to do with a shrinking machine. I don't know why. I think it was the FDA. I don't know. Maybe it was some other. No, they said FDA. Did they say FDA? It doesn't make any sense to me why they would have any regulation over a shrinking machine. It's got nothing to do with food or drugs. But whatever. Unless you're shrinking food and drugs. But why would you? (laughs) I I don't know. (laughs) Why would you want to do that? Here, I'm going to shrink my food and make it less. Well, I think one of his ideas, I think his original idea for the machine in the first movie, if I'm remembering correctly, was (laughs) something about the fact that he could... uh, enlarge the size of food oh, okay. with it um even though it was a shrinking ray but i guess it was, it was a size ray thing and you can make and, and maybe that was in the second movie or something like that where you could take like a watermelon and make it really huge and then a lot of people could have watermelon. okay i got you, you know, so or, that way yeah. you would have to spend less money on food okay all yeah. right that makes sense all mm-hmm. right i guess that makes sense why the fda was telling them they can't do it okay yeah. so his brother says no don't do it but he does it anyway oh wow it works so they're you know they're like all excited about it you know trying to find you know the tiki man because it was so tiny and then they were right in the you know the square area where the machine shoots at and then you know his brother says literally oh i think it's powering up again because you can quite quite clearly hear Hear it it's powering up it makes the same exact sound as it does right before it shoots something and then rick moranis's character a genius by the way supposedly 
Oh no, it won't it won't do anything unless you hit the button. It seems like he gets stupider by each movie. He does. He gets dumber by each but and then um and then like just conveniently there's like a bunch of you know, billiard balls that are just by the area and it has got this little lever that or something. Yeah, it's like, like a croquet mallet gets knocked over and knocks one of the yeah. knocks one of the balls onto the machine. Yeah. And then it sets off the button. The machine looks different, by the way, oh, than really? it did in the other movies. It didn't have that whole little Rube Goldberg sort of uh, <laughs> um, apparatus on the top that the uh, that that seemed to fit a uh, fit a billiard ball perfectly, <laughs> so it could go down and hit the button to turn it on. Right. It, it just seemed like very convenient. Yeah, it, very mm-hmm. or inconvenient. Yes, for that matter. But uh, yeah, so basically, I mean, what you're saying then? Then they 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 end up shrunk. Mm. Hey, folks, this is uh, Michael E. Cullen II um, from the podcast that you're listening to right now, along with Matthew Haas. We just wanted to tell you about our great, great podcast Super. called Super. It's called All Too Real. And on that show, what, what do we do, Matt? We, we watch biopics, and then we talk about whether or not the movie matched up with the real story or not. So we, we, It was a lot we, more exciting than that, though. Yeah, so, 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 so we... We analyze the real story and the real story. Get it? Get it? Real. You know? Yeah, they're, they're spelled differently, yeah. folks. You can guess which one I said which way. Uh-huh. Anyways, um, so uh, sometimes we have a guest, sometimes we don't. Um, but we uh, talk about great, sh- great, uh, great movies like uh, Shattered Glass yes. and The Social Network and uh, a Futile and Stupid Gesture, among others. Um, those are some of the ones that we've covered so far, and uh, we're going to cover a lot more. So uh, please uh, subscribe on Stitcher, um, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, wherever you uh, find your great, fun podcasts. And be sure to share it with your friends. Do it. Do it. Do it. And make sure you're not afraid to get all too too real. real. Bye-bye. Speed things forward a little bit. They they, they end up shrunk. The... um, Diane and uh, her sister-in-law, Patty, played by Robin Bartlett from uh, Mad About You, among other things, um, come back from uh, – they're on their way to their vacation. They come back because they – because, okay, first off, the reason that they were running late to begin with – okay, I, I just want to – I want to point this out. The reason that Patty and Gordon, who is uh, played by Stuart Pankin, who is – Known to a lot of kids for being the the voice of uh, of um, the father on the dinosaurs um, TV series. <laughs> known to a lot of kids, yes. Yes, it's a lot a very of, popular show. Uh, known to a lot of kids in their thirties and stuff. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but anyways, the, the um <laughs> the um anyways, he, they were running late to get there because the idea was that uh you know. Um, Gordon and Wayne were going to watch uh, watch the kids for the weekend. And uh, Patty and Gordon have two kids as well. Jenny, played by Smallville's Allison Mack. And uh, mm-hmm. Mitch, played by uh, an actor named Jake Richardson. And uh, they... Um, anyways, Mitch has this issue where he... I can't remember the name of the issue, but it was something where he has uh, low potassium. Yeah. And he needs to take medicine for it or he'll die. Wow. They basically say that he will die if he doesn't take this medicine or get the right amount of potassium that he needs. I didn't know you could die from lack of potassium. I don't I'm just I'm just saying what they said. I can tell you you could get sick and get tired, sure, but I didn't know you could die. But I guess I guess he could die because it's you know, if he goes into a coma or something. Yeah. But anyways, so they come back because of the first first when they when they arrived at the house to go to go on this vacation that patty and diane are going on the reason that they're running late and uh overreacting patty because patty just seems to be nervous about everything yeah she's very anxious yeah the reason she was running late is because they almost forgot mitch's medicine that's why they were running late to get to the to, to wayne's house then they left it in the car. And then they left it in the car, and even though that was the reason she was running late. In the first place. And then they yeah, I'm pretty back. sure that I would make sure after that. But but then, you know, we wouldn't have a plot. Right. And <laughs> <laughs> Right. 
So they had to go back to get to get to to leave the medicine yeah. there, and in the meantime, uh, the kids are gone because they uh, because they think that they're left alone. Because at this point, they found money for pizza, and they heard a message that Wayne had left earlier about going to see a, a some kind of spaceship launch or something. Okay, yeah, that's right. They went so, to buy so, snacks and stuff. So they right? went to buy snacks and stuff with the pizza, and then and then uh, Jenny uh, decides to invite a bunch of her girlfriends over. Who it's really weird if you listen to the phone call at that point. The girl on the other line, you can actually hear what she's saying, and I had to rewind it a couple times to listen to this. But she says something about you'll never believe my underwear. Uh, Which is really weird for a couple of twelve-year-olds to be talking about. Anyways, um, <laughs> I'm just saying. Okay. I listened to it and I was like, "Did I hear her just say Did underwear?" She actually say that on the other line. That's You'll what never it said. Believe my underwear or something of that nature. I don't that's know the weird. exact line, but it was something about her underwear, and I just found that really kind of creepy. I, uh, yeah. Anyways, <laughs> maybe it was something that was like inside joke or something. I don't know. Or foreshadowing to the future of Allison Max life. Anyways, maybe, um, maybe. <laughs> good, good. we'll get into that in a little bit yeah. here. Yeah. Um, that's the real agenda of this podcast. Yes, is to, is to launch into something else. <laughs> but anyways, <laughs> the, the um, but anyways, they decide to have you know this party or whatever. But in the in the meantime, um, they leave. They the the the, the wives come back. Um, they say, "Oh, the kids will know we're here because the car's in the driveway." Mm-hmm. But uh, because Patty's so, um, I don't know, uh, has had a lot of neuroses and stuff, she uh, decides to, uh, normally she puts blocks behind the car because she's afraid of something with the parking brake mm. not happening. The car, of course, she forgets to put the parking brake on there. The car goes, Ooh. Yeah, this time she forgets to put the brake the one time. Yeah, and, and the, then and the, car but the, the car goes into the neighbor's yard. Which is still right in front of the kids it's, as they're coming back. Right in, but that's the other thing. Okay, there's no car in the the part the driveway. Fine, the car is literally in across the street's driveway, facing them. Yeah. At, at but but point, the kids the kids are like out. skating right in well, front of it from the when they're coming back from the carryout or wherever they got their snacks. And yeah, shit. they didn't even see that. And My point is though is that <laughs> at what point uh, someone's gonna look out the window at some point and they're gonna see hey. What's my mom's car just standing? doing? Yeah, uh, unless no. unless everybody has a station wagon that looks exactly I like guess. that. Yeah. But um, but anyways, but when they when they came back when they came back they put the medicine on the counter, in front of the uh, very strategically placed uh, um, trick cereal box that is like advertising. Yeah. Like, there's just so much product placement. Oh in this yeah, movie I know. That it's it's hilarious. <laughs> anyways, um, I I guess they got all they got like uh, General Mills and some other people to donate a lot of money to this movie so they could actually have a little bit bigger budget. Yeah, I just imagine this movie with a lower budget than what it already had. Right. I mean, mind you, I would love to have the budget they had for this movie. I could make a decent movie. Yeah. Out. But um, the. <laughs> but anyways, so so, they go up and they're looking for they're looking for Wayne and Gordon, and they get shrunk. They get shrunk. I forgot how do they get shrunk? Uh, another one of those billiard balls falls. Are you kidding me? No. I forgot about. Th- yeah, so the same exact thing same exact happened. thing oh happened. God, but why? What what made I, it fall? Like, I guess the the machine getting to critical mass would shake the oh, shake okay. the building, and then it knocks off one of these billiard balls that's near the uh, near a croquet mallet of some why sort. Why did he even have those near? I don't even get it. Was he playing I with the croquet mallet while he was doing stuff? With I, I mean, whenever I have a shrinking machine. <laughs> I always, you know, make sure that I have a shelf right near it with billiard balls on it. It's just this weird thing that us scientists like to do. Yeah, I'm a scientist, by the way. Did you I know keep that? saying no. billiard balls. They're croquet balls, right? They're, they're probably croquet balls, I, but they look I like keep... they look. They look. I, I couldn't tell though if they were croquet because I never played croquet. It's but just they, like a, yeah. It, the balls, but I think they're pretty similar balls, anyways. They're like yeah. whatever. I, but I, but I, whatever, I just, whatever kind of balls they were. Yeah. You got to keep those near your n- near your shrinking machine. Well. You know, it's 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 required by federal law. Yeah. In movies, no, and right. I don't know why the hell they were there. So the same thing happens. They to get them. shrunk. Okay. Wow. And then Diane gets mad because she realizes that 
Wayne was just using he was using the machine even though he wasn't supposed to to shrink the freaking tiki man. Right, because that was right. She there. was mad about this tiki man. Right. Uh. My thing is, it's like, let the dude have some fun. He wants a tiki I know. man. It's like let him have something stupid that he like. I mean, it's not stupid, but just the way it looks dumb in a house like that, just sitting there. But so yeah, so what happens then? I forgot. They they have to. They're trying to find. They. they they climb up a wicker chair. Um, I forgot for what reason. Oh, to let the kids know they're shrunk. Yeah, and to then, try try to get outside, and they they get down. They they take a fishing fishing line down to the next floor, right? And then they end up in um in Adam's bedroom. Okay, yeah, now I remember. And uh, and then they find the Ma- Sports Illustrated magazine. Yeah, like the the kids come in there and. They're looking at a magazine that's kind of almost implied that they're looking at something like Playboy or something. Right. Or like even the Sports Illustrated swimsuit issue, but it was actually Sports Illustrated just, for kids. Just regular but, but sports. The, but the way the kids yeah. were getting excited was almost like they were like, ooh, look at these dirty pictures. Yeah, I know. And then, you know, it's like a picture with some basketball player some. on the front. I think it was, it was it was either like Shaq or Michael Jordan or somebody on the cover, you know, whoever was popular right. at that time. But it's just <laughs> And that was because um, Rick Moranis' character's son wound up play baseball and sports he wasn't really yeah. as into science he wanted to go dad. to baseball camp instead of science camp and his dad was like well you know no you love science he's like yeah. I, I gotta make you do what i like just mm-hmm. you know just as you know which is nothing like he was in the other movies because he seemed to be very supportive oh, of really? his kids in my opinion it yeah. just i i watched him not too long ago but it's still been a while but anyways so yeah they find that and then they go downstairs they find themselves in the kitchen at some point and i I'm yeah i mean something. there's there's well, well, oh, they, oh, they, they, they get down through the. They, they're riding in a in another uh, product placement, a Hot Wheels car. That's right, the Hot Wheels car. <laughs> down, down on, on this uh, Hot Wheels track, where there's very, as they're going down this Hot Wheels track, which ends up being kind of like riding a, uh, you know, like a roller like a coaster, coaster yeah. for them. They, uh, there's some, there's some inconsistencies where the background is actually what's in the front of them. Oh, there's, there's just different, like they. <laughs> It, it, there, there, there's some in, inconsistencies there, um, but anyways, they end up flying the laundry chute down into a laundry basket in the uh, in the basement, and they had these like orthodon orth- orthodontic like rubber bands around their uh, around them to protect themselves inside the car that just totally disappeared and never appear again. Mm. <laughs> just I just had to point that out because wow. there's different um you know. I, I can go through a lot of the mistakes later on in this talk. You know, this is very important, folks. Yeah, very important to point out all these mistakes. <laughs> yeah, um, the, uh, but yeah, they, they end up there and they go through a bunch of, you know, crap where they're trying to, including crap of roach crap. And yeah, they, oh, that's right. Yeah, I remember they, that. And they, uh, I don't know. They, they, just, they had to escape the roach because, yeah. and then I know at one point, they end up back upstairs because they're in the um, – that's where they find the roach, I think, is upstairs because they end up back upstairs because the kids bring the laundry up. Oh, yeah, okay. Because, you know, kids are actually doing something. Like, my, my thing is is you've got a bunch of kids coming over. The last thing I'm thinking about is grabbing the laundry the laundry, basket. those are very good kids that are doing chores <laughs> while their parents aren't even home. Wow. Yeah. But but they but they had already made like a like 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 a chili volcano and stuff. That's like right. That. I remember that. Yeah. So yeah. So what happens? They get separate. At some point, they separate voluntarily. Yeah. Right? They, they yeah. They they take a they the way they get down back downstairs is through a uh, there's a bubble machine that one of the girls because these girls come over. Oh yeah. That are right. that are friends of Jenny's to have a little slumber party sort of thing. These girls, including one of them who is uh, played by me, a uh, very very young Mila Kunis. Yeah prior to that 70s show. Yeah. Um, she plays her friend Jill. Anyways, <laughs> the, uh, they, I don't know, they, 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 one of the girls brings a bubble machine because, you know, no party is complete without a bubble no, machine. No, it's not. And they, it really they, isn't. Yeah, no, I mean, every party I've ever been to and there isn't a bubble machine, I walk right out. I mean, I would. Yeah. I, I, I walk right into the house and I'm like, hey, do you have a bubble machine? They say no. They say no, and I'm, I'm like, I'm like, Bail. yeah. They're, they're like, hey, we got a live band. I was like, I don't nope. care. No bubble machine. <laughs> I'm not staying. Right. Like, we got all the food you want and everything. Nope. nope. No bubble machine. I'm not staying. It did look pretty cool, though. I mean, yeah. 
I mean, it looked like a really. I'm fake. being serious here. I, I mean, I never stay at parties without bubble yeah. machines. You know me. Yeah. I, I, I'm known as the bubble machine guy. <laughs> Anyways, uh, <laughs> so they have this bubble machine. It's up on the stairway or something like that. And uh, the way that they get down is uh, Diane and Patty get into, they, they, they go into one of the bubbles. Yeah. Through the machine and then they land safely onto the ground. Wayne and Gordon get into another bubble. I'm just not trying. I'm just, okay. Nothing against Gordon. He's a big dude. I can understand it holding the two kind of you know lighter weight women, mm. but Gordon and Wayne. But they're still tiny, though. I guess it would. I mean, like I don't know. It, it just seems like, like ants or something yeah, like that. Just, I mean, I, I just don't even know if an ant could stay inside maybe of a not. bubble. I don't know how that works. I don't know the science behind this. Uh, it probably is no science behind it. It's probably yeah. just something they did. So yeah, they get end up almost getting into the fan ceiling fan right uh it's, it's like a chandelier or chandelier something. And they get and, and the bubble pops at the same point that somebody's walking by with a uh a bowl of uh, onion dip oh yeah okay i remember that yeah oh here and here's this funny line that's like such a sexist line in this movie so they're like oh well don't worry we'll be okay it's just a bunch of teenage girls how much can they eat yeah, like that's okay. So you're well, I don't know if that was necessarily anorexia to teenage no. girls that they can't eat. Like I don't know if that means that. I mean, I might just be because they're small. No, it means what I say. It means okay. It, it means it's it, sexist. It was a sexist we'll go with that. agenda. No, anyway. So no, because this movie has a, a very a, a, a very feminist we're agenda talk later. About this later. Okay. This is very <laughs> ironic too. Yeah. Extremely okay. ironic. But we'll, we'll, we'll get to that soon. I, I'm like itching to get to that part. All right, but so they of course dig into the dip and they're trying to make sure they don't get eaten. Yeah, and it's very similar to like in the first movie. There was a scene where uh, Nikki was in um, a bowl of like Cheerios or something. And, oh, that's or, right. I or Odeos or something because they didn't actually Odeo. use product names in that movie. But this one, they didn't need to. We 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 have Honey Nut Cheerios. We have uh, Tricks. We have Diet Coke. I mean, we have. It was, uh, <laughs> it was a lot. I think Cheetos <laughs> yeah. played a part at some point. We, we had like a like Save on Drugstore on the bottle for the kids' medicine. You know everything. Right. We we had. <laughs> I think Costco was in there too at one point. The Possibly. bag, I think, was yeah, like might have been. Wow. Yeah. Anyways, <laughs> the uh, so they 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 end up in the in the dip. They end up being okay. The girls don't eat them, of course, because if they did, then the movie would just then end. They eat your parents. That'd be <laughs> terrible. <laughs> <laughs> That's another one. It's like, Mom, I ate Dad and Uncle Wayne. <laughs> the unfortunate turn. This is a, a went in the bad way. <laughs> so they get out, and then what was their next plan? Okay, their next plan was to do something with the stereo so they could make their voice. Yeah, they amplified. they 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 had the idea early on that they wanted to amplify the amplify their voices, and so they go over to the Sony stereo. Yeah, Sony, it's right. Yeah, and it said Sony really big on it, right. but it was really small. But still. And at this point, a bunch of a couple oh, yeah. of guys, a teenagers, couple, some some boys, like about three or four boys, come over. Um, one of them is a boy that uh, Jenny had been dared earlier to call oh. and tell that she uh, thought he was cute, and somehow that just told him that he needed to come over to a party. Yeah, yeah and I don't even know how they knew where they were. Yeah, whatever. Because it wasn't at Jenny's house. This was at Adam's house. That's and right. Jenny's. Wow. So I I. I, I guess maybe maybe I missed a line or maybe line. they just knew it's you know yeah but the the kids uh, Ricky King is the played by an actor named Jojo Adams oh. it's the only thing I know of him from is cool this movie name. yeah who had like a nice little uh, late nineties uh, girly hairstyle that we oh, all, yeah, that, that was, we all had back then that was very popular yeah <laughs> that sounds like a like a blues musician I could see him playing like a like an acoustic guitar. Jojo Adams Jojo tonight. Adams. Tonight in Chicago at the at the House some, of Blues something theater. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyways, uh, Jojo Adams, if you're out there listening, Jojo, yeah. please contact yeah. us. I, I'd like to see what you're up to now. Now, man, I mean, you're, you're good in the movie. You played a jerk well. Yeah, I, I don't know to, if that's a compliment or not. I wanted to punch not, you in the face, even though you are were a kid. Yeah. So it worked. <laughs> He's not a kid anymore. He's no, like in his thirties now. So we're good. Okay. Um. <laughs> This was twenty years ago. I know. <laughs> twenty twenty one years ago. I know. Um the uh so uh Ricky is pretty much a Ricky and his little friends are jerks to um Adam and Mitch. Yeah, because they're little kids. What are they doing here? Yeah. 
So, oh yeah, we forgot to mention that. I don't know where it is in here, but at one point Mitch almost dies. Oh, that's right, because the the moms, so they the women, they they separate. They go to the kitchen because they're trying to get to make sure that the medication is uh, yeah. seen because it, it's like it somehow got hidden. Even though when they set it down, they set it down on the counter in front of the in front of the trick cereal box, mm-hmm. but somehow between that and when the kids ended up into the into the kitchen after they went to the carry out or the or the grocery store or wherever the hell they got their snacks um the bottle of medicine ended up in between the box of um general mills tricks cereal and the general mills honey nut cheerios box mm. yes mm-hmm. general mills yeah. If you wouldn't like to sponsor us, General Mills, we'd be more than happy to let you. Yeah. Okay. Anyways, contact me at all too real podcast <laughs> at gmail.com. <laughs> all too real to podcast at gmail.com. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways. Anyways, okay, so so they can't find the medicine. Um Mitch sees the sees his mom and his aunt like little. That's right. On the he, counter. T- he tells him that, but he's, and, the, he's and then he faint, and then he faints. He's having an episode, so they think yeah. he was like hallucinating. Yeah, and then so he faints, and then um, Adam surprisingly remembers that uh, bananas have potassium in them, and so they feed him bananas, and somehow that saves his life. Oh yeah, I love this scene because because like how did you know that? And he's like, oh well, I, I didn't say I did, never listened to my dad talking about science. I'm like. You had to listen to your. I learned that in health dad. class. I mean, like, I mean, I don't the know. The fact that you know bananas have potassium that shouldn't have been learned because your dad is a scientific genius. For one thing, what does that have to do? Was he a food scientist? What does that have to do with? Well, the FDA was involved, uh, yeah, so I maybe so. he is a food scientist. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> I don't know. So what? Do you, so anyway, so 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 anyways, I mean, I can't remember if that happened if if that scene happened before or after the scene we want to talk about. I don't remember. Well, no, it happened. It, was it before or after the boys left? Who knows? No, no, no. no it, oh, it had to. Oh, it had been before. Oh, it had to been before because the reason that they left was because of the Sony thing. The Sony, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Anyways, um, we're getting off track here. <laughs> so, so, so the, you know, that happens. Um. Anyways, uh, Diane and Patty are still hanging out on the counter. Yeah. Or whatever, this- and then, um. We go back into the room with the kids at some point um, after, you know, M- Mitch is miraculously saved by the by, by Adam. And by, like, two bites of a banana. Yeah. Which means, like, huh, maybe he doesn't need medicine at a store if it's just two bites of a banana can resurrect him in just yeah. eating bananas. I, I mean, I, mean I don't know. I mean, this could be a serious disease that we don't know anything about. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I'm just saying. You're making fun of it. Yeah, I'm just like, saying. Really there could be somebody listening out there who really has this right. issue and is happy that a movie addressed it. Exactly. I mean, I don't I don't want to belittle anything. Right, right. I'm, I'm just saying. My thing is, it's like, because, because, uh, but the other thing is, too, it's like, okay, there, there's a weird message in this movie, too, about, um. Not a weird message, but there's like, okay, Mitch is like, his way of being a badass is not taking his medicine. Yeah. I understand kids don't like to take medicine or something, but if it's going to save my life. Right. I would take it. Not really. I mean, and plus the thing is, it must have been something that he's done for years and he's just used to. But he says at one point, he's like, I don't even think I need it anymore. (laughs) Because he all of a sudden is a doctor and knows that he doesn't need it. Yeah. It works too well. It means I can quit. <laughs> the medicine does its job. Which means that's the problem with a lot it. of people is like yeah. if the doctor says, hey, make sure you take this all the time, but you start feeling better and then you stop taking it because you're starting to feel better. But you feel better because you you're took taking it. it. Yeah. So Whatever, yeah, I'm just saying a lot of people do do that. And chicken I mean, that, and that, egg. Chicken yes. and egg. Uh-huh. Okay. So, 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 uh, um, all right. So at one point, um, Good old, uh, what's his name? Uh, Ricky King, played by JoJo Adams, yep. um, <laughs> decides to uh, uh, decides to try to get it on get with with, uh, yeah. with Jenny. Yeah, he he 
tells her that he wants to talk to her in the kitchen. Yeah, alone. Because you know what wanting to talk to somebody in the kitchen means. In a party, yeah. Yeah. You know, usually when I'm at a party, that just means... Oh, I mean, of course, it has to be a party with a bu- say, bubble you're, you're machine. You're not at much parties because most of them don't, don't have, have bubble, bubble machines. <laughs> but anytime they've been at a bubble machine and somebody wants to talk to me in the kitchen, yeah. it's usually just that somebody wants to talk to me in the kitchen. Anyways. About um, bubble machines. <laughs> yeah, about bubble yeah. machines. And, you know, usually, I mean, sometimes if I stay at a party that doesn't have bubble machines, they just want to pull me into the kitchen to ask me why I'm freaking out that we don't have bubble right. machines. And they're like, Mike, you're going to have to leave because, you know, we're not going to get a bubble machine. And then I'm like, I'm sorry, but... I need a damn bubble machine now. And then, like, Mike, if, you know, if if you want a bubble machine at the party, you should bring your own bubble machine. And I'm just like, I don't have a bubble machine. And then they're like, well, maybe you should solve that and buy yourself a bubble machine. And then you can bring a bubble machine to every party you go to. And then I'd be the bubble machine guy. Yeah. I should think, I should look into that. You, You could be the bubble machine guy. Yes. I always wanted to be known for something. I just carry it around everywhere you go. Yeah. Like, here's my bubble machine. That's actually a good calling card. Yeah. You could be the bubble machine. Do you think I could guy. get women with that? I uh, probably not. But okay. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you you create like a sort of you know legend for yourself though, or a myth. You know the bubble machine guy. He just goes around everywhere he goes. Takes a bubble machine. Just it's like hey everybody. Mike, the bubble machine guy is here. here. Uh, mm-hmm. Anyway, we're like really okay. So <laughs> back to the party. Okay, they're in the, they're in the kitchen, and uh, good old uh, Ricky King decides to uh, try to kiss uh, Jenny. Just lays on a big kiss on her, totally, yeah. and she pushes him away. And then it goes. And here's so this is so weird. This whole scene, surprise. Okay, so, like this whole like the whole nation has been like uh, having like this conversation for the past two years about like consent what, yeah, and the me what, too, what me consent too movement means i mean this whole like multifaceted debate like just even goes beyond like oh well you know they didn't say no so that means yes like no like like, like consent now has like meant like a very very specific like which is okay. Yeah. Well, no, what I'm saying yeah. is like this is like this is like the conversation that's been going on for like mm-hmm. two years. Okay, this exact conversation is tucked away in this 1997 direct direct to video Disney, Disney movie, <laughs> and it's like, did they have a time machine? Did they come into like 2016 yeah. first and then go back and then? But I mean, because like like her 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 mom and her mom and uh, and and her aunt are watching her do this. Yeah. And they're, uh, you know, because they're little and they're on the counter. And she pushes him away and says, you know, basically no means no sort of thing. She doesn't, I don't know the exact dialogue. I can't remember it. But, you know, but they were really proud of her, you know. They're like, oh, you go, Jenny, you know. Well, what she said yeah. was, uh, you know, you didn't ask me if I wanted to be kissed. Yeah. It was very so it was, it was very specific. Yeah. And he's language. like, oh, well, I didn't think I had to ask if you wanted to be kissed. And all this, and then, then, I mean, then, then he's something like you know other girls are like that or whatever, and then she's just basically like I'm not other well, girls. I'm not, yeah, I know yeah. I'm not one of them. And then so yeah. he gets all pissed off and leaves, and then yeah, and then they start him and his buddy start trashing the house then because mm-hmm. she rejected him as punishment. And let's go back to this uh, to the to this little Me Too scene. Oh yeah. Okay. We're here, going on detour here. Okay. This this is this is a nice detour. Okay. <laughs> if anyone has seen the news since like October of 2017 until now. You've probably heard of Nexium, not the heartburn medicine, no. you know. And I don't think that's related at all to Mitch's medicine at all. No. no. And it was okay. The the um Nexium is N X I V M is how it's spelled. It is a uh it is a business success program started by Keith Raniere. And uh, it's basically a cult. And one of its prominent members uh, slash kind of leaders in the cult is Allison Mack, who played Jenny Zielinski in this movie. And uh, Miss Mack, as I will now refer to her, has allegedly, I'm going to emphasize allegedly because I don't want to get sued, Oh, yeah, and by the way, it's allegedly a cult. I didn't say allegedly earlier. I meant to say oh. it, and I'm going to say it now to cover my ass. Anyways, uh, <laughs> allegedly, she has been part of this cult and started a 
cult within the cult for women. It's supposed to be for women empowerment called DOS, which uh, the uh, actual name of the uh, thing translates loosely into something about a uh, um, master slave um, submission or something of that nature Whoa. from the original Latin that it was in. Not DOS, but the what DOS is a uh, you know an acronym for. Um, the uh, but anyways, they basically a sex cult, allegedly, that uh, that have allegedly um, been starving women to uh, make them uh, perform sexual acts for Keith Raniere. As well as uh, allegedly being branded mm. near their genitals by a cottering iron without any kind of anesthetic in a room in a ceremony mm. where you can smell the, the where, where the other women in the room were wearing masks because they could smell the flesh burning wow. on these women. I mean, well, uh, uh, you know, a brand, I mean, iron, you know. Yeah. I mean, it and, it, and, 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 and it's not even just like, you know, like when, when you brand a cow. Yeah. It's a, it's like a, a brand, you know, like you see that where it's just like a, right. a fast, you know, a, what? A, a, a fast brand, like where they just tap them with the, yeah. with a thing for a second or two. Yeah. This, they're, they're using this cottering iron, which is like a pen mm. and drawing oh, the brand. Actually- yeah. Oh, I see. I thought it was. Yeah, no, it's allegedly. It, uh, no, it's it's not actual, just. No, it's it's not like a brand. It's like, like a tattoo almost. It's almost like a tattoo because basically what she has allegedly said is that uh, the that that a tattoo wasn't didn't show the commitment enough. Oh wow, wow. That she that's thought there, there's some yeah, and and they're basically sitting there and 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 it's because you can imagine like if if somebody if somebody were to like just stamp your hand with a stamp right. That takes two seconds. But if I were to take time to draw the same thing that was on that stamp with uh, with, with like a, a Bic pen or something, <laughs> that's so, basically the difference between... So being burned for two seconds isn't enough. you got to be burned for like 12 minutes it, they, 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 they said it would take a half hour to an hour to do this. So you got to be burned for an hour to, be, to prove your commitment. Yeah. And Alice Mack is allegedly the second in command of, of this Of, of Nexium of and, and, and the leader uh, so allegedly of this DOS... Um, also called the Vow, which is which is supposed to be like a movement within the movement. Yeah, I guess to empower women. To yeah, it was supposed to be a but women. somehow it's very opposite of empowering because because nothing says empowering woman than having a name that says master slave submission. Yeah, and and you know being branded and allegedly being um, you know made to have sex with Keith Raniere. Right. So, 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 so if you want to look up more of this stuff, I highly recommend yeah. doing it. You can get you can get trapped like I have in, so, in a rabbit hole for like weeks. It's amazing reading about this. To, it's it's very scary. I mean, a lot of you probably have heard about this, but it's just so weird that the dichotomy, dichotomy between this and the uh, and that scene the in scene this movie comes out of nowhere and and, and, and the scene weird, is very women empowering. It is. It's such a weird movie to do it though it's 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 like it's just like thrown in mm-hmm. there i mean it'll be it's like i i so i come across stuff like this all the time in movies where i'm like this scene is so good that it really deserves to be it like another deserves movie. to be in a better movie because <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it does because yeah. she's like 12 years old at this point or 13 yeah and this guy just like just totally lays a kiss on her and like again this is 1997 this is it was yeah. normal for movies to like you know the guy's got chased the girl and then to prove you know he's just got to lay a kiss on her to really show that he's interested in her and then yeah i mean th- th- this this was a i mean this was like a couple years before uh before like american pie and stuff right. like that you know it's not like the era of you know me too and right. stuff and then this is like i mean not not saying that american pie is necessarily promoting any kind of you know, besides with Stifler, but that's another. No, story. it's yeah, not. But it still but has its same like, got so my wild oats. Got, yeah, you know, I mean the whole like, the whole idea of that film is to lose their virginity, yeah. sort of thing. Yeah, but this, I don't know. It's it's just so weird. This Me Too scene in the middle of a of of, 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 of a nineteen of Honey We Shrunk Ourselves. 
and being played out by someone who allegedly is a second in command of, of a sex cult. It's, she, it's, she, she's been arrested. I mean, that's the other thing too. She's been arrested. Right. I don't know when this will air, but uh, she's got a trial in two, in, um, in uh, October of 2018, a hearing or whatever. Um, she's right now out on bail, living with her parents in California. On um, it was like a five million dollar bail. Wow. Um, she's she's uh, under house arrest there. Um, Keith Ranieri's in jail as well. He's he. They wouldn't give him any bail because he's a flight risk. They were arrest. They were both arrested in Mexico. They had they had escaped to Mexico and they were brought back wow. to the United States by the like it was like the FBI or somebody involved. So that's not alleged. That all actually did happen. Yeah, that actually. So, <laughs> so we don't we so, don't have to say alleged. For yeah. <laughs> but so you know, and she's. I don't know. It it just it's just so disheartening when you see this scene and you're like, this little girl. In this movie, I know, I, I know it was just a character she was playing, and you know people, you know, and I mean I'm sure though she, and I'm sure you know I, I don't know I mean I don't want to presume how she's thinking, but obviously she's been brainwashed or something's going right. on, and I mean her point of view on life has changed since then. Well, because, she played it so sincere yeah, that scene I mean, too. And, I mean, yeah, and, and she was I mean, and a lot of people are big fans of hers from Smallville. She was on that for you know ever. I don't know how many years that show was on. It was on like you know, half a dozen, I, I half never, a dozen or more years. I, I never, never watched, watched it. But I never did either. It was on for like eight yeah. I mean, I, I watched it. I watched the like the first season, and I remember thinking, you know, wow, you know, her character Chloe was cool, and mm-hmm. she was she was this um, high school reporter who was always trying to get to the truth and all this other stuff, which is kind of ironic mm-hmm. too. So it's yeah. just kind of funny when you watch when you go back and look at the characters she played and how like motivating and empowering to women they were yeah to her ending up uh getting involved in nexium sometimes people just they like they want to believe in someone or something and they want to relinquish their control because it makes them feel safe i guess or secure yeah. i don't know i mean it's i'm it's hard to presume what someone's motivations are for joining any type of organization like that but it usually has something to do with wanting to relinquish your own responsibility to someone else so that they can tell you what to do and you can basically get brownie points or whatever. Yeah, I mean, so, sometimes you just want to have some have some kind of it, – it's almost like a like a letting go of control type thing, but mm-hmm. then you actually – sometimes you feel like you have control because of that because yeah, you have some kind of, like, order in your life. Yeah, it's something. weird. You let go of control, but then that mm-hmm. itself becomes an aspect of – this is it's very paradox kind of thing. But anyway, that was a – uh, that was a nice little tangent an we went on. So necessary detour because that yes. scene is such – it just comes out of nowhere. Yeah, but and, it's like, wow. And like, I, mean, I, I mean, I planned to, like, maybe mention the whole Allison Mack thing before I saw this movie because I mm-hmm. saw she was in the cast. And then I didn't expect the, the, the whole, like, you know, paradox or whatever you want to call it between that scene and the reality. And the it's just kind of weird. Hi, folks. This is Michael E. Cullen II from the podcast that you're listening to right now, along with manager Matthew Haas. You got promoted? Yes. Damn it. Okay, anyways, um, folks, uh, do you like the show Superstore? Well, I don't know. I asked the folks and nobody's answering well, me. Because they're not here. Oh, but we love damn it. it. Yeah, we love it, though. Okay, folks, if you like it as much as we do. You're really going to like the Super Story podcast, which is a podcast where Matthew and I go uh, episode by episode and give our little opinions and thoughts on it. Uh, sometimes we have guests, sometimes we don't. Um, just depends on how we're feeling. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so if you like this podcast and like our little crazy banter, then you should definitely check this out. Or I might get sad. And when I get sad, it gets pretty sad. So, I can't deal with him when he's sad. Yeah, uh, no one can really. So, um, yeah. So, so check out uh, Super Story Podcast right here, where you get this podcast, Super Story Podcast. But but back to the movie though. Okay, after <laughs> after that scene, <laughs> after after the Me Too scene, um, we have a uh, we have an instance where uh, they finally um, in the other room, Ricky King and his buddies are like messing up the living Just room, trashing the trashing place, the yeah. place, and. Uh, Wayne and Gordon were working on trying to rewire the uh, the stereo system so they could use the uh, use the speaker as a microphone, which you can do. Mm. Um, and uh, 
use the use the speaker as a microphone so they could uh, broadcast out to the uh, kids so they could find them and basically save them. And so, and, and I will tell you this: Stuart Pankin is probably my favorite actor in the movie, who plays Gordon. Oh yeah. I don't know. He's just funny. <laughs> as as you know, the as Wayne's brother, he's I just find him really funny in the movie. Mm-hmm. But he he does this. They do the scene. Wayne's inside, and he's. I actually was impressed with the set there too. The the little inside of the stereo, the all the circuitry and everything. It was actually a pretty well made set, and that was an actual set as opposed to half the movie seems to be done on blue screen, or green screen, or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. And uh, but uh, they rewire the thing, and Gordon talks to the kids through it and pretends to be God, talking to the kids, and he tells uh, Ricky King where he lives and. All this other stuff, and the kids kind of freak out and go home. And then they realize, oh, wait, wait, God sounds like dad. <laughs> Jenny and Mitch realize that. Turns right? out your dad has been God all <laughs> yeah, the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, so, so the the basically, then we we have the whole thing where the movie ties itself up. They get the they get the um, parents all into little Hot Wheels and carry them upstairs. Hot Wheels. Yeah, Hot Wheels. That was that was another. They're made by Mattel, by the way. Yeah. And if Mattel would like to sponsor this podcast, you can contact me at all two real two podcast at gmail dot com. Yeah, I doubt Mattel. They is they, they won't. But yeah. it's, it's you nice know. to call out because yeah. I like Mattel. You know, they make good toys like Barbie yeah. and Hot Wheels. Hot and Wheels and Barbie. I mean. And then some <laughs> other stuff too. <laughs> Anyways, um. <laughs> 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 sorry for that. Sorry for sniffing right there into the microphone. No, it's okay. Very unattractive sound, but <laughs> <laughs> no, there we go. There's some more attra- unattractive sounds. Anyways, we'll <laughs> um. but uh, but yeah. So, so so things kind of tie up, and they 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 question whether they should uh, make the parents big again because oh yeah, you know, right. like out of nowhere, it's like okay, you guys realize you do need your parents, right? I, I mean, like, you're 12 years old. It's like, and what you're just gonna like, keep your parents <laughs> shrunk for the rest of their lives, you <laughs> fucking assholes, like. Yeah, because they're, they're like, um, like Adam's something like, I got a hamster cage I could keep them in. <laughs> but uh, the um, so so then the, the movie then ends with a scene where they they let they let uh Adam go to baseball camp. They come back from baseball camp and they pull into the driveway, mm. and uh, mm. and uh, Wayne's like, "Oh, I moved the tiki man to the backyard," and then they pull up to the house and. Quite possibly one of the worst special effects I've he ever seen. Blew up the Tiki Man. Yeah, that he's looks huge. Absolutely fucking terrible. Yeah, it's just kind of photoshopped onto the shot. For one there. thing, I'm pretty sure that the entire neighborhood would complain about that, and he had to remove it. No yeah, one. Yeah, y- usually, see I mean, I mean, we had we had a car in my yard one time that didn't run for a little while. We had I mean, not in the yard, but in the in the driveway. We had it for like a couple weeks in the driveway, and a neighbor called us on that. I'm pretty sure a neighbor would call you about a freaking Tiki Man. Wait, what? Your neighbor called because he had a car in your driveway? Yeah, there, there was a, a car that wasn't running for like a month or two or something like that. Or so maybe, what? Maybe. You're not allowed to have your cars in your driveway? I, don't get um, I guess you have to have a, you have to move your car every so often legally. What? You can't have a car sitting in your driveway, and it's they're stupid. Why? Laws. I mean, if you park it there in that same spot every day anyway, so what difference does it make? I guess there's some stupid laws. That is so stupid. That, that, if, a, that if a car goes unmoved for a certain amount of time, it's different in every city. Okay, I guess, so just put it in neutral and move it like two feet. There you go. Yeah. There's your, your but I guess you're supposed to drive your car every so often legally. That's so stupid. It's your whatever. Yeah, I, I know it. But 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 anyways, whatever. you know, na- neighbors will complain about stuff like that, or like if your grass is overgrown a little bit. Right. I mean, you think somebody's gonna complain about a freaking tiki man in the Huge backyard? Huge ass statue. I mean, this is going on like. It, like, it's 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 at least a story or two taller than yeah, the house. It's like, yeah, that was the end of the movie. That was that, yeah. I thought that was so stupid when I saw that. I'm and like, that's how we tied up the, uh, the, the whole Honey I Shrunk the Kids trilogy. Yeah, and until they kind of rebooted as a TV series right. with Peter Scolari a year or two later. Right. But um, <laughs> but so um, there were a couple a couple of things um. I wanted to bring up some so, some major like goofs within the movie. Mm-hmm. I don't like to point things out like this, but actually I do. Mm. Why did I say I don't? Because <laughs> you don't. Yeah. Anyways, uh, the 
there's there's a scene where after Mitch has fainted and Adam and Jenny are feeding him a banana, Jenny is speaking to Mitch, but her lips aren't moving correctly. Mm. If you watch it, you know, it's the little bit of a dub that's messed up. Um, at around 33 minutes into the movie, when um, Adam and Mitch are playing with their uh, their uh, chili volcano, mm. And it is uh, getting ready to erupt. That thing was, like, nasty. Yeah. There's a random hand of a of a crew member oh. pushing the balloon back down into the volcano. Oh, wow. Yeah, if you watch it, there's, like, I actually remember seeing this, but, you know, this, there's this random hand that is not Mitch's and it's not Adam's. And because they're on the other side of the, of the counter and the hand is coming from the other direction. Oh, wow, I didn't notice that. Yeah, it, it's so fast you can barely notice it. But there's, like, another scene. There's I think I think it's when they're in the uh, – when they're inside – I think it's when they're inside the Roach Motel thing because, like, oh, yeah, they, at one point the, the parents hide inside of a Roach – a, a little uh, Roach trap to, to hide from the Roach killing them. Oh, okay. I forgot about that. Yeah, um, they, they're inside there, and you can actually see the boom pole or, oh, the, wow. the, 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 or the boom mic. You know, so coming wow. down into the shot, and then there's some other th- times where the uh, background isn't lined up with the foreground and stuff in the blue screen shots. I guess it didn't have a great editing team, or, or I don't know what's going on. It, it happens. I mean, I've seen it happen. Maybe many. they rushed I, I, it. I, I, I've seen it in um, in very very expensive movies where you've seen a boom shot. Oh, wow. You know, I, but I remember one time there was some movie I saw a long time ago with Kevin Pollak. I can't remember what it was, but there was a boom mic visible in like probably about four or five different scenes very visible in the movie so you know things get released that have decent budgets but i don't know anyways but uh so yeah the i don't know there's 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 some other revealing mistakes and stuff in there but it's just you know up to you to find them but you know i recommend you know not watching this movie um (laughs) how about you Good Easter egg hunt. Yeah, I wouldn't. Yeah, I wouldn't. I would not recommend this. Really, I mean, if yeah. you want to watch it for whatever reason, fine. But I mean, it's probably you know, like if 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 you're watching some kids or you have kids or whatever, and you need something to, you know, kill time with. It's not like it's a horrible movie, like a kid friendly movie. Yeah, yeah, you know, something that's decent. A, you know, kid friend, kid friendly movie with a good like Me Too. Uh, yeah, I mean, thing in the middle of it. Yeah. Well, that's important now too because it is. because kids are younger and younger now. So maybe you should are, watch this movie. Are, are you know engaging with your kids. in like courting rituals, which you know we wouldn't even do until we were teenagers. Now they're doing like ten or eleven. So yeah. like, it is and good, plus, I guess, to watch something like this. I mean, I mean, like I said, yeah, it's something good to watch with your kids, maybe, and you know, maybe not, you know, by yourself when you're forty years old. No. And, um, <laughs> Like I did, but um. <laughs> well, well, you had to watch it for. Yes, yeah, I podcast, know. <laughs> so, can I can I go back to this car thing? though? I'm sorry. I'm yeah, go ahead. Now. So, what if you have like two or three cars, like a two three car family, and well, for whatever reason you just don't like to drive that one car? So you're saying that you're forced to have to drive that car to go to the grocery store one week, even if you like. To I drive think you the have other to. Car? I don't know. I mean, it, there, there's some I mean, stupid laws. Like I I just know that we got in trouble and we had to move the car. That's bullshit. Like because the car the car had stopped running. I mean okay. that that's one thing. That's but, the reason why, but 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 still, I mean, it, we ended up getting it fixed and or something. I can't remember exactly what went it's down because like, this was like twenty years it's ago. It's like this is my but, grocery car. Yeah, car. This is this mm-hmm. is the car I like to go and shop at. So the law is telling me that yeah. at some point, but I guess if, if it's out, to, if it's outside, you have to like. I mean, obviously, if you have a car inside of a garage, what you if don't you have, have like a it? long ass driveway like at my house where it's not an eyesore because the car is parked way up. Close to the maybe, house. maybe that's the difference because I had a shorter driveway. I don't I'm know. I'm starting to think that maybe, but it's still, it's, I, whatever. I think it's stupid. I just think it was an asshole neighbor. I think, of you're, ours. I, I, think I know what neighbor you're talking about. Yeah. Like that piece of shit that used to throw, beer, throw beer cans in my backyard. Yeah, and stuff. I should yeah. call a piece of shit. But yeah, anyways, trouble, but it's okay. <laughs> it's all right. I remember that guy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, people like that, you know, when I was growing up, you know, people are just assholes. I mean, I. I mean, because you know, <laughs> this is a weird turn for this body. Yes. By I'm the sorry. way, here, here's some word of wisdom, folks. <laughs> People are just assholes. Yeah. So whatever. Yeah. So yeah. Deal with it, I guess. Yeah. So, anyways, uh, I've always been trying to figure out a way to sign off these uh, these podcasts. <laughs> I, always, and I always ruin it. <laughs> may, 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 maybe the new way to sign off is I just say people are assholes. People are assholes. <laughs> deal with <laughs> it. <laughs> deal with it. Don't be an asshole. All right. Anyways, uh, 
you know, be sure to, you know, <laughs> check us out on CullenPark.com and all that good stuff. Um, yeah. Uh, anything else, Matt? Oh, man, I was I, I actually have something to recommend this time, but I totally oh. forgot about it. Well, no, I'm, oh, well, we can do that on the next we'll one. We'll do that next one, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Or whatever. I don't know if I want to do recommendations on this one. Oh, Anyways, okay. So. All right. So we have so many different podcasts going on. Yeah. It's, so it's hard, to, <laughs> it's hard to kind of remember. But yeah. Um. Yeah. So so the the that's uh that's all for now, that's folks. Um. You know, go out there and uh, be good to each other. Have a have a good, yeah. Be good to each other. Have a great day and night. And remember, if you do not have a bubble machine, Mike is not going to your party. So no. It's not happening. So. No. So so if if you if you would like to. Email me at all two real two podcast at gmail dot com and invite me to a party, please. In the body of that email, let me know if you're going to have a bubble machine at your party, and maybe I'll show up. All right, all right. goodbye, folks. Bye. Thanks for listening to All Two Real Two podcast, a Cullen Park production, produced and edited by Michael E. Cullen the Second. Music by Matthew Haas. Subscribe and share the show. Visit us at CullenPark.com. Yeah.